أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Welcome to Ramadan Reflections. Today being the 29th day of the blessed month of Ramadan for the year 2023, 1444 in the Islamic calendar. Now, for some of you, this may be your final day of fasting for this month of Ramadan for this season. And to you, we wish you an early Mubarak. May Allah accept your fastings and your prayers and supplications and all your efforts in this blessed month. For others, tomorrow is going to be the 30th day of fasting. And so we say to you, may Allah accept your fast and give you the strength for one more day to make it through this blessed month. Um, and also, may Allah accept your fasting and prayers and supplications and, and uh, attempts to understand the Quran and all the goodness you've done. For today and tomorrow, we want to look at four more women that the Quran speaks about. However, they're not women that we are expected or that we should follow, but we need to learn lessons from everybody, the good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, these four women, the two we're going to look at today, and, but the four in general were married to prophets, but you know, that really means nothing to us. It means nothing to me that you're married to a prophet. What really matters is, is not your lineage, but your character. And so today, we want to look at the history of two wives. One is the wife of Prophet Nuh, Prophet Noah, peace be upon him. And the second is the wife of Prophet Lut, Prophet Lot, peace be upon him. Now, before we go into further details on who they were and why they were reprimanded in the Quran, let's have a review of the verses for today, which come to us from chapter number 66, Surah Tahrim, verse number 10. Allah says the following, Allah presents the wife of Nuh and the wife of Lut for those who are bent on denying the truth. They were married to two of our righteous servants, yet betrayed them by rejecting the messages they brought from Allah and conspiring and collaborating with the unbelievers. But they, their husbands, the two prophets of God, availed them nothing against Allah. And it was said to them, enter the fire with all those who enter it. Now, before we go into comment on these two women in our theme of not like the other women in the Quran, we need to note, brothers and sisters, that this chapter is interesting on many fronts. If you haven't read it, I would advise you to read it and read the commentary and go through the explanation given by our scholars. But to sum it up in brief, it starts, this chapter itself starts by talking about two wives of Prophet Muhammad. Um, these women that were paragons of disrespect, and so Allah had to reprimand them in the Quran for all eternity, for everybody to recognize who they were and what they did against their beloved messenger and husband. But the chapter ends with two amazing women in the annals of history that we have to look to for guidance and inspiration, namely Asiya, the, uh, Asiya bint Mazahim and Maryam bint Imran, two women that we Uh, peace be upon them all, two women that we spoke about previously and I think at length and the Quran has spoken about with glowing tributes and many verses. But in the middle between the two wives of Rasul and the other two wives, uh, two women, in the middle Allah speaks about and informs us about two other women that we need to learn from. Not for their goodness and, and love and care and compassion, but rather for their evilness. And I'm talking about the wives of Prophet Nuh and Prophet Lut, peace be upon these two great prophets of Allah. Now, as Allah notes in this chapter, in this verse, he says that these were two prophets that were his righteous servants. However, their wives, well, let's just say they were not that good to be called righteous. Uh, now, what was wrong with them that Allah had to present them as women that we should not look towards for guidance? You know, this is, uh, just on a side note, this is something that the Quran does uh, on some occasions where Allah will present us with the good, and obviously that's the vast majority, the awliya, the friends of God, the prophets, the messengers, the, the wise sages that are in the Quran, people like Luqman, Al-Hakim, people like Al-Khidr, uh, many other great people in the Quran that we look to for guidance and inspiration. But, you know, sometimes Allah does... Mention those people that we need to be aware of because of their infamy, I could say, in history. You know, we have the story of Pharaoh, for example, of Pharaoh. We have the story, if we, even if you forget about Pharaoh, let's go right to back to the beginning, that, that, you know, beginning of history, beginning of creation, beginning of the Quran. It's about Satan. And Allah even goes out of his way to quote the words of Satan in the Quran. We see the stories of the Pharaoh, we see the stories of or the, the condemnation of Abu Lahab and his wife, Umm Jamila. And so Allah gives us many times the uh, 
opposites as well because you know brothers and sisters in our life the one of the best ways to know what to do in terms of goodness is to look at the people who commit acts of sin and we even have a, a, a statement if I'm not mistaken in one of the hadith I don't want to attribute it to the Prophet or Imams in this month of Ramadan because obviously that would invalidate a fast if we intentionally attribute something to them that they did not say uh, but one of the awliya, I can say, has said that when he was asked where he learned his good manners from, uh, he's quoted as saying that I looked at the people who have no manners and I learned from them. So similarly, if we want to learn uh, at one level how not to act, we look at the people who are infamous in history and we do the opposite of what they did, basically. And so Allah does present us these examples in the Quran of People like Satan or individuals like Satan, of men who are bad, of women who are bad, to show us what we should not be doing. So hopefully uh, that makes it clear. We move on, you know, and um, I think first off I want to say that, you know, these women that we're talking about today, especially, uh, that they acted with treachery. And the Quran confirms this against their husbands and the prophets of God. However, as commentators would tell us that their sins were not of the flesh. I mean, they didn't transgress boundaries of sexual immorality, impropriety against their husbands. As we have a hadith, and we believe that none of the wives of the prophets have ever stooped to that level of committing, God forbid, adultery or any of those actions. Now, the women, some of these wives of the prophets, they would have been guilty of many other types of offenses. But again, not sexual impropriety, impropriety rather. And also, just as a note, Ayatollah Makaram Shiraz, he does mention this in Tafsir Namuna, uh, in where he quotes the hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, where the Prophet is quoted to have said that there is no wife of any Prophet that has ever been guilty of a sexual crime. So if that's the case, then what is the crime of the wife, the wife of Prophet Nuh and the wife of Prophet Lut? Why were they condemned to hell, to burn in the fire of hell? Well, we know that the crime... And de we know that the crime and deviancy of the people of Prophet Lut was that they were engaged in acts of homosexuality, same gender relations. And for that, and their refusal to give up on these acts, and mock, they were mocking the rules of Allah and the Prophet of the time, they were destroyed by God. They were destroyed, the entire community, except for those who followed Prophet Lut, which were not many people actually. The Quran tells us that the wife of Prophet Lut, peace be upon him, was not involved in the sin of the community of, of uh, engaging in the act of homosexuality. However, we're told that she did conspire and work with the enemies of her prophet and husband. And that any time Prophet Lut confided in her some, his, some of his secrets, she would turn around and tell the people of her society what was being planned. And Historians say that the same can be said for the wife of Prophet Nu, peace be upon him. And that, that is, is why she is also reprimanded in this verse. You see, if you, if you study the story of Prophet Lut, peace be upon him in the Quran, we know first of all that he was actually related to Prophet Ibrahim. They were cousins, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Ibrahim is in, in, uh, in what is today occupied Palestine in a certain area. Prophet Lut is not too far away, maybe a few hundred kilometers away. And as I said, that his community was engaged in acts of sexual deviancy, of homosexuality. And what would happen is whenever Prophet Lut salam, would make plans on, on what to do, the strategies and other things to try and get his community away from this act, or when people would be coming to town, people that would be passing by their village and uh, the people of the society that were engaged in this act would basically lure them into their homes. Uh, the wife of Prophet Lut, peace be upon him, was uh, basically aware of a lot of the things that he was trying to do to get the community to change. And rather than keeping those secrets to herself, she would actually... Uh, she had friends in that society, obviously in that community, in that city, and so she would basically be informing them of what was going on, what Prophet Lut was planning, maybe in terms of even wahi or revelation coming down to him, what Allah was speaking to him about and what was going to transpire. So although she was not involved in the actual act, but we could say she is an accomplice to the act because she gave these people shelter, she protected them. She tried her best to ensure that they would be able to circumvent 
the system and do what they wanted to do, their nefarious actions. Prophet Nu, peace be upon him, his wife, although their crime was not the same as Prophet Lut, peace be upon him, his community rather, Prophet Nu's people mocked him, they insulted him. This is mentioned multiple times in the Quran, in fact, even in the chapter known as Surah Nu, Surah Nu. In the 29th section of the Quran, the, the Quran paints this picture of the people of the time of Prophet Nuh alayhi salam, that when he would come and preach to them in the open and, and warn them and propagate about the word of God, uh, not only would they put their fingers in their ears to stop from hearing him, they would take their cloak, their overcloak, and cover over their head. <laughs> they didn't want to hear what he said. But his wife was reprimanded because she was also an accomplice. Again, maybe not openly, but she was aiding and abetting the criminals of his society. Now, let me move on a bit from this discussion uh, and continue here. And we have to note that, you know, there's some interesting points in this verse of Surah At-Tahrim, chapter 66, which I wanted to bring forth before we conclude for today. And I'm, I know we're getting tired. It's the end of the month. And so just bear with me for today and tomorrow. Uh, and then we'll conclude. Um, but as we have seen, I, I just mentioned that, you know, these two wives, Allah says, they were married to two of our righteous servants. However, Allah says, they betrayed them. They rejected the messages they brought from Allah. And more importantly, they conspired and collaborated with the unbelievers. And there's nothing worse than conspiring and collaborating with the enemy. It's treason, it's sedition. Now this portion of the verse proves to us that it is possible, brothers and sisters, hear me out. It is possible for a prophet to be married to a woman that is less than honorable and respectable due to her own actions. This notion that some put forward that it is impossible for Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, to marry women that would be harsh with him or lead less than a respectable life after his death or would wage a war against uh, the prophet's cousin, and son-in-law and successor, this flies in the face of the opinion of Allah. Allah shows us when it comes to two of his prophets, Nuh and Lut, peace be upon both of them, their wives betrayed them. And in doing so, they betrayed Allah and the message that they brought. And they conspired and collaborated with the enemies, with the unbelievers. Perhaps this is a premonition that Allah was giving to what the wives of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless them and his family, would do after his death in Medina. It's not impossible to believe that. And again, being a wife of a prophet doesn't make you immune from sin or immune from critique. Number two is that the, their husbands, as Allah says, availed them nothing against Allah. And it was said to the wives of Nu and Lut, peace be upon both of these prophets, enter the fire with all of those who enter the fire. The second point, brothers and sisters, and my final point for today is that as Allah shows us that family relations means nothing to Allah. Just being the wife, being the son, being the daughter, being the father-in-law of a prophet doesn't mean you are a good person and are destined for paradise automatically. Just look at the life of Prophet Muhammad. May Allah bless him and his family. His uncles were not all believers. We know about his wives. We'll look at them tomorrow. His father-in-laws as well. Need I say more, right? No, we must earn paradise. It's not given by default through marriage. That doesn't matter who you are, a scholar, a prophet, an imam, a, a, a nabi, a rasul, it doesn't matter. Now, if the wives of Prophet Nu and Lut, peace be upon both of them, are, as seen in this Quranic example, chapter 66, Surah at tahrim can go to hell, and the wife of the Pharaoh can go to heaven, what is that to say about the wives of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family? Are they all paradise bound? Now that's up to Allah to determine, brothers and sisters, based on the actions of that person. We as Muslims, as Shia Ithna Ashari, we make no decision on, on, the, on behalf of Allah. But we do judge them based on what Allah tells us in the Quran. And anybody who says you cannot judge them, they need to go and read Surah 66 Tahrim and look at the commentary and the hadith from their own sources. In any case, I'm going to conclude right now this day of Ramadan reflections. I'm going to continue tomorrow and conclude tomorrow regardless if it is eat or not for you as we produce 30 videos for Ramadan for 30 days. So please do join me tomorrow even if it's your day of Eid. We're going to look at one more uh, collection of verses of, in the Quran in which we review the plots against the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah bless him and his family, which were hatched by Aisha bint Abu Bakr and Hafsa bint Umar. 
And then inshallah, we'll have a message for the day of Eid, which will be obviously uh, the first of Shawwal. For you and living in, for people living in different parts of the world, it may be a different day. That's not a problem. It don't, that doesn't make a difference. We, we follow our rules locally. We follow our regional responsibilities. And so please do stick around for tomorrow's final discussion and then the message for the day of Eid. Until then, brothers and sisters, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.